Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. We'd like to thank y'all for coming and checking this video out. I'm Danny, Don is behind the camera, standing in front of our EOG F550 with our host truck camper. We get asked a lot about how we make this special. How do we make truck camping special? Well, today we're going to tell you how we do it, and it's by something we put on the front of this sucker. So stay tuned, you're going to be surprised. guys welcome back so this is a moto jack carrier what it is down us steps back here we'll show it to you the jack assembly that goes onto the front hitch so the jack raises it up and you can lower it down and it clamps onto the pegs of the bike that's what actually holds it there we have straps here on the front and in the back because when you're traveling with it, the bike will wobble a little bit when you're hitting bumps and stuff. So this cuts down on that. You don't need it, but we like it. The other thing that we did is we added a 12 inch extension down here. If you see this from here, this is where a hitch is, a hitch receiver, and then we added a 12 inch extension to this so it would extend this much basically from the front of the truck and at this height for us the seat and everything is below my vision when we're driving the other thing that we did to help secure it is we lock the handlebars so we lock it put in the lock position and unlock it you know just take it off and then we can take the straps off so this keeps it from doing this going down the road so a lot of people will just strap their their bike this way or whatnot. I'd rather put the handlebar lock on and it just gives me a little bit more peace of mind. So again, the straps, I recommend it. You do what you want, but that would seem to work good for us and the locking of the steering wheel. We also have the hitch stabilizers on the front of the receiver hitch and on the front of the uh, or the back of the uh, the 12 inch extension and of course you know security locks the main tool that you will need to get that we didn't have is this 25 millimeter uh wrench and you will need that down here so down here you will see that it has a locking wing nut and then this is the 25 nut here and that's how you can torque this down to give it uh, security. When it's sitting on here, if you look at it, it's sitting on the plate here, they don't actually sit up there without even having these up there. You know, it's almost like a bike uh, uh, stand for when you're doing the maintenance on the motorcycle. This here is a Yamaha TW200. It weighs 276 pounds and it screams down the road about 55 miles an hour. But if you can look at the tires on this thing, they're all terrain. So it does really good in the deserts, mountains, forest roads, and Donna can ride it, and she's actually got a motorcycle license. So it's, it's a Yamaha 200, it's very lightweight, it's, it's, it's not real fast, and you can almost get off of this thing in first gear and walk next to it, it won't stall. It's very easy to ride. We use this as our grocery getter. If we're boondocking, we don't want to lose our spot. We use this to go out in the town to go get our groceries, into the backpack, buy some milk crate, etc. We go into town. If we want to go on a boondoggle and go look at the sites and stuff, we take this. This is what we use. And uh, it works out really, really well for us. So that's the only special tool that I didn't have in my toolbox was the 25 millimeter. So Amazon, it was $22 on Amazon for this wrench. Uh, went to Harbor Freight, you had to buy the whole set to get it, and we weren't going to spend 150 bucks to do that. So that's that. So to take it off, basically lower it down, and you lower it down over here, standard hydraulic hitch. This right here is where this gets lowered. This here, you undo the valve. Babe, if you want to cover on this side, I can show you guys right here. You're going to lefty loosey to, to lower it down, righty tighty to raise it up. So that's all we do with that. Before we do that, we're gonna take a cut and we're gonna take off these straps and we'll come right back. All right, so I got the, the, the pin unscrewed. So you have to take a little bit of pressure and, 
uh, or lift this up a little bit so it takes the pressure off the pin and the pin comes straight out and you can see how it's screwed in. So when you're traveling, that prevents it from falling. So you're just gonna set that off to the side. You're gonna go to the release valve here and Donna's gonna walk to the front and I'm gonna just go a little bit down so you can kind of see it going down. I'm just going really slow just to kind of see so you all can see how, how it's done. Okay, now you can see the bike on the ground. You can see the back tires on the ground. We have an uh, elevation off grid truck with campsite leveling, and I have it so the suspension is lowered about four inches. So it lowers the bottom of the truck a little bit to help us do this. So right now you can see this is in the down position, but it's still sturdy. It's being held in by these pegs on this side and on the other side, and it just sits here. So we're going to take these pegs out. It's crazy to do. If you guys haven't figured it out, we're in Florida. We just fought a hurricane a few days ago, and we survived. <laughs> but it's freaking hot, i.e. tank tops and shorts and flip-flops. So, Alrighty, Tony, let's do this. Now again, it's really simple. Washer, nut, that side's off. Now we're gonna to go to the other side. As you can tell, it's still sturdy. So you'll see a little bit of uh, drippage here. And it's because I cleaned the chain and uh, oiled the chain today because it's super easy to do all the maintenance. And this thing is sitting up on a jack at basically you know, my height. Instead of getting down on the ground and doing all this, you can do this and, uh, with the jack all the way up, but I don't like to. I'd rather do it with the jack down, you know, station first kind of deal. And as you can tell, it's just me. Donna's filming, so nobody's holding the bike right now. You can do this as a one person deal especially if you have a lighter bike. But me, it takes me and Donna, you know, basically doing it together, putting the bike on here so we don't hurt each other, <laughs> right? Or, hurt, or she don't hurt. But um, that's it. The bike is, is free, and I'll show you what I mean. So you can see the bike moves now. Let's turn this sucker. That's it. It's off. So here's the real story behind all this. We actually have the real, uh, the big carrier, motorcycle carrier from Harbor Freight. We bought the aluminum one to start off with. And it was so rickety. It was do this going down the roads and it just, it, it just wasn't safe in my opinion. The bike would lean forward. Then we bought the steel one. And that's pretty good. There's not nothing wrong with that one, but it's a hundred pounds. So that's a hundred pounds that you're putting on your hitch, plus the weight of the motorcycle, plus everything else you have to take into your hitch weight. So with this one, it was just super easy to do. There's different manufacturers of this one. They're all made from this copy from Moto Jack Carriers. We actually found this one on eBay. We paid $379, which was about half the price of what you found find everywhere else. And it's exact copy, it's Chinese, the Chinese copy. So we haven't had any problems with it. So on the hitch receiver, the extension, make sure that you buy a quality one. Don't jinx, jinx out or cheap out on that. Because if you look on, on YouTube, you'll find people that have had problems where they've broken at the welds so make sure we did our homework i have a good one 
and make sure that it's welded. And, and a lot of times you can get a solid shank here. And the, but the solid shanks are usually for like 18 and above. The 12 inches are hollow. And I, I thought we did good. Also put the stabilizer clamps on there and you won't get any, if you can see that, you won't get any movement out of that at all. So that's really about it. It's when you buy this thing, it comes in a box. It's from China. It'll take about four or five days to get to you, and it's in pieces. And the, the directions, I had to use a magnifying glass to be able to read them. So, and it's, it's best to assemble it while it's mounted, or at least sitting in the hitch, because everything will be right there. It's easier for you to assemble everything. Putting it on is the same way as basically taking it off. Um, when we put it on, me and Donna lifted up the back end and put it on. That's what we did. Don't really need it. But it's if you're, you know, two people, it's better than one person. This added a couple of more feet to your front end. But like I said, it was below your, 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 on ours, it was below the windshield. So it was, it didn't mess up any of that. So that's what I recommend. You can put this also in the back of your truck. But when you get it in the back of the truck, you're going to get a lot more of the oopsies. And that thing's going to move around a lot. Where it's on the front, you can watch it better and it doesn't do as much. So if you have any comments or questions, please reach out. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And if you hit the like button, it really, really helps us out and makes us stay relevant. So we're trying to pay that electricity bill down here in Florida for the air conditioning. So please help us out. Thanks for watching.